as the past few years have shown us, evacuations can and do happen here in Santa Cruz County. Just like emergencies, evacuations come in different shapes, sizes, and durations. You may need to be away from your home for a few hours, several days, or longer. This program describes what you can do about these disruptive events. Plan and prepare. What is the right time to start this process? Right now. Okay, so you know we're this program is on evacuating your home. We'll talk about planning for an evacuation, some of the reasons why you could be ordered to evacuate, and an overview of how the evacuation process works. We'll also talk about what happens after you have been ordered to leave your home during an evacuation. Some emergencies that trigger an evacuation we can see coming. For example, a wildland fire may be burning in a part of the county, grows and expands over time, or a storm system that builds and moves into our area with the threat of mudslides or flooding. Other emergencies will be sudden and happen without announcing themselves. Earthquakes, for example. They leave Santa Cruz County residents with little or no time to prepare. Recently, we've had localized emergencies, wildland fires that affect an area, while leaving the rest of the county untouched. In cases like this, the infrastructure, services, and resources for most of the county continues to function and can be called upon for support. We've also had widespread emergencies, like the 1989 earthquake. In cases of large magnitude earthquakes, we may be cut off from surrounding areas. In that situation, we will need to be self-sufficient for hours or maybe days until outside help reaches us. What could cause an evacuation in the future? Fire, mudslides, flooding, tsunami, or hazardous material spills are on the list of possibilities. It is essential to plan and prepare now before you get a call or a knock on the door telling you and your family that you have just 10 minutes to evacuate. There's quite a bit of information on the web that can guide you with your planning and preparation process. A good source of useful information that is presented clearly and simply is the brochure titled Ready, Set, Go. It's available at www.readyforwildfire.org. Click on the red square in the lower left corner of the home page that says Ready, Set, Go. The next page has a link to download the brochure. The CAL FIRE website at www.fire.ca.gov is another good source. Click on Communications, then click on Fact Sheets. Scroll down the page to Fire Safety Education. Here you'll find a list of documents on evacuation and other topics, many in both English and Spanish. You can download and print these materials and reference them to help you organize your preparation efforts. If you have animals, you need to plan for their evacuation as well. License your dog and have your dog or cat chipped so they can be identified and tracked to you. To shelter your animal, a portable kennel is needed, as well as extra food. Public shelters during emergencies provide an area nearby to shelter small animals, but you will need to provide the kennel and food. If you are separated from your animal, small or large, contact Santa Cruz Animal Services at 2200 7th Avenue. They will have a database of the animals they have collected and can help reunite you with your pet. Part of your planning should include making arrangements with your neighbors to contact Animal Services in case an evacuation happens while you're away from home. When Animal Services is notified, depending on a disaster, they will attempt to pick up the animal and take it to a safe shelter, like the fairgrounds. Or, if the animal is safe and secure where it is, coordinate a feed-in-place program so it can remain at its home. This applies to large animals like horses, pigs, or llamas, as well as dogs and cats. It's likely you'll receive notice of an evacuation from an automated notification phone call to your home number or if you registered ahead of time, your cell phone. The call will tell you that you need to evacuate. What would you choose to take with you to your car in those few minutes? What would you leave behind? Imagine what it would be like to have to make those decisions in a short time. This is why you need to plan ahead, to make your decisions before you get the call. In addition to the CAL FIRE checklist mentioned earlier, here are a few best practices of the preparation process. Register your cell phone to receive automated notification system calls. 
go to the website for the Santa Cruz Regional 911 Center and register online. The website is at www.sccecc.org. The process is quick, easy, and important. Not only will you receive notification via your cell phone when it's time to evacuate, you will also be notified when you can return home. Establish a meeting site for your family. Emergencies may not happen when everyone is home from work or school. Establish one or more locations in the county to meet at in case an evacuation occurs in your area and prevent your family from returning home. Hey Dad, this is Vern. Establish an out-of-area phone contact to act as a central information exchange point for everyone in your family. Depending on the emergency, phones may not be working locally, but calls out of our area to a remote site may work. Establish a contact, perhaps a family member, outside of the Santa Cruz Central Coast area. Make sure every family member has this number. Some do's and don'ts during an emergency. Don't call 911 for an update on the emergency. The 911 dispatchers are a valuable resource for the community and they need to be available to help those experiencing actual emergencies. Do evaluate the area you live in for possible evacuation routes. For example, if you live in a remote location, your options for evacuation routes may be limited. Knowing the options available and planning for different circumstances could be the key to survival. Do monitor public media. Watch or listen to TV and radio stations to get updates on the situation. Tune in AM radio to KSCO at 1080. It's a local emergency press release radio station. As a part of your preparation, you'll need a battery-operated radio, along with some spare batteries on hand. Don't forget to check it from time to time to be sure it's working properly. Do call the 211 system for updates on the emergency. Hi, Use the 211 system for the location of shelters, evacuation routes, or other community resources. Although this information may not be available immediately when the emergency occurs, it will be added to the 211 database as soon as it is available. Do make a list of the essential items you must take with you when you evacuate. The most common item people forget is their medications. Law enforcement will control access to an evacuated area and then patrol the area to prevent looting. You will not be allowed back into the area to access your home until the emergency is over. When ordered to evacuate, you will be directed to a nearby reception center. Reception centers are not necessarily shelters. Sometimes a site can be both, but it should be your first stop after leaving your home. The Red Cross staffs these centers and provides fluids to those who arrive. They distribute information on the emergency as it is available and, if possible, provide access to watch or listen to public media. When you arrive at the center, you may register your arrival with a staff member. This information is fed into a database that is available on the web. It's called Safe and Well and used to help family or friends locate you. When you register, you control who can have access to your information, so your confidentiality is preserved. Support animals are permitted at the reception center. Pets are sheltered nearby, but outside of the reception center. Individuals arriving at a shelter will be assessed for any special medical needs. Those needing medical support will be moved to a medical facility. Sites that have been used as shelters in the past may or may not be used for the current emergency. The location of shelters change to adapt to the needs of each emergency. The reception center or calling 211 can help you find the closest shelter site. The county's emergency services believes an informed public is a better prepared public. As emergency evolves, incident command posts at the site are the first step in the process of gathering information, analyzing its significance, and passing it along to the public media. Updates may not be released as quickly as we'd like because it's important to be accurate with this information. Stay tuned to the public media or call 211 for information as soon as it is available. Santa Cruz has been lucky with the evacuations that have happened during the last few years. No one has lost their life during the emergencies. Don't let this lull you into a sense of complacency. That evacuations aren't necessary, or planning ahead of time is a waste of time. If you receive the orders to evacuate, don't delay. 
follow the instructions given by the emergency services.